and welcome back guys. As I mentioned in the previous lesson, we're going to be tackling more complex shapes. So if you want to follow along with this session, you can find this specific scenes in the Amaya Essentials project and it's labeled as section 5 lesson 5. Now the first thing we want to do, well we're going to be building this out of NURB. So as we know, NURBS needs curves. So I need to draw out the shapes using curves. Now normally on something like this I prefer starting off on the front view as it's a simpler one of the simpler of the three views and all of you guys should recognize this as the Wii controller. So I'm gonna go jump into my orthographics and go shift A so all of them zoom out to the correct distance and I'm going to maximize my front view. Now as I can see I've got a bunch of round little shapes. I've got the directional controller. If I'm not mistaken that was the analog stick and so on and so forth. So let's start off by drawing the outside section. So I'm going to go to my curves. I can go and grab in here. That's my EP curve tool. It remembers that I'm using uh, it remembers the settings that I have placed on it so I can just start drawing out let's put one here and then we need to go around now remember we can go in after the fact move these guys around as well as rebuild the curve and all that good stuff I'm just gonna go rough this out then there then there and then there and then one in the middle there there too close so let's go put one more there I have been liking that one eh, curves can't live without them you can't live with them but one overshooting because our distance is way too much let's go backspace uh, relatively much closer much closer then it should not break out as much like that for example and then what I want to do is click one here and then I'm gonna go click close to the beginning where I press enter my keyboard and as you can see it goes all the way around so now that I have my curve drawn even though that areas or messy I need to close this curve so I'm just going to select it go up to curves and use the close open option as you can see it closes this curve so now it's seen as a singular curve now I can come in here and just fix a few things that I can see this curve is doing way too insane like why is one of the CV points up there and then this guy should be about there this guy should be about there but if we were smart about this just like modeling we would only need to really draw one side of the curve and then we can mirror it across and we will be happy forever so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and grab this guy press w to move move it in one axis and then hold down x for grid snapping and grid snap it there so now that we have our shape and as i mentioned we would only need to fix up one half and then we can reconnect both sides to create a closed loop so let's go cut this guy at the center point that we have here. I'm gonna go and go to my EV, EP curve tool. I'm gonna double click it. I'm gonna go, well, was already in linear. So click on linear and I'm gonna hold down X for grid snapping. Put one, the star point up here and the end point down there press enter let's just go select that curve again and just reset it so it's back to cubic now i'm going to use another option within the curves tool i'm going to select both curves and i'm going to go to curves and then here is an option in here that says cut okay and what it's going to do is it's going to cut all the curves where they overlap so they overlapped here so as you can see it created two or curves here so I'm not gonna need that top one I'm not gonna need the side one I'm not gonna need the middle one and then I'm gonna not need the bottom one I'm gonna turn off my grid by pressing the grid view button here so that I can see what's going on here a bit better now I've got my curves in here let's go right click and control vertices as we know now those two points are at the center so I am NOT gonna be moving them around I can see that's the star point and next to it is the U symbol I'm going to move these guys up a tad and then we can go and move that here. I want a straight line so I'm going to go and grab these and just scale them in the Y so that I get them straight. Now I need to go and move these CVs around to get a cleaner curve around here. That one should be about fine where it is but I want to go and select if I can delete that one and delete that one. Need that one. Tighten up that curve. Now if I go down here I can potentially delete 
that one. It keeps that curve nice and clean up there. So I used four points for here. I'm gonna need one, two, and then we've got this guy, this guy. Where are you coming from? Oh, you're the center one. And then you. I'm gonna do that, that. Again, grab these bottom ones, scale them flat so that I get a straight line. And then I can go grab these two, go all the way up and go grab these two. Press R for scaling. Let's scale them flat and then press W. Click on the X because now if I go in here, middle mouse click and drag, it will move in the last axis that I activated. So I'll just move that guy here. And then this guy, I can play with the curvature like so. I wanna get this line in the center of the reference images that I have. You know, there's a straight line going nicely through the center. Actually, it's not going nicely through the center. So now that we got the curve where we want it, I'm seeing a little bit of a bow happening here. So I'm gonna add more resolution so that I can just pull it in a bit. So I'm gonna select my curve, go right click, and I'm gonna go to curve point. And then we're gonna be using the tool called insert knot, which is this guy, click on that. And then if I left click on my curve, you can see it inserts a point. If I hold on shift, I can click somewhere else and I can do multiple points. But if you don't hold on shift, it will remove whatever you put in and only do one at a time. I'm, so I'm gonna put two points here because I think that should be enough to pull it in back. And then I need to go to curves and go to insert knot again. And if I go into my CV option, you can see there's a, there are the two points that I threw in there and I can pull them in a little bit. See this guy is actually, I need to pull it closer so that this guy can go closer. So I can go harder edge. Let's go grab them again. Grab these two up here. We can go and scale just to get them straight. I can make sure my top do hickeys and do the same. Cool. Now let's go check on the bottom ones. This one can be moved down here a little bit. Grab them, scale them. And this is cl as close as we potentially could get to this curve that's going through the middle and i'm aiming for this cur the curve that i've drawn to stay in the middle of the illustration so i'm using that as a gauge to make sure i'm keeping close to concept or close to reference okay great yeah i can see it might not go the way i want it pull this guy in a little bit and then the point there's another point up here yeah. Maybe if you bring it down a bit, then pull it in, it'll force that line in a bit. And I can take these guys a bit downer. A bit downer. Okay. Oh, sweet. Now we've got a curve. I can go, as you can see, its pivot point is in the center. I can go control D and then I'm, which duplicates the curve. And then in the X or the scale, I'm going to go negative one and press enter. And as you can see, it moved or mirrored the curve across. Cross. Now again, we need to go delete some history and freeze transformations and all that good stuff like we always do with objects before we go into the next step of, step of things. You can see this guy is slightly off a bit, but that's fine. Remember guys, the reference images you get will never be 100% perfect. Even photographs have some problems. So I'm going to go and select both of these both of these curves. I'm going to go right click, control vertex. This, I want to right click. Control vertex, hold on shift, right click, right click, control vertex. Because I would like to see where one starts and one ends. As you can see, both of them start at the same point because it's just a mirror, one is the mirror of the other one. I'm gonna go uh, back to object mode. This guy, I'm gonna go to curves and reverse direction so that its end is here and that start is there. Now let's see when I go and say, curves and a hatch. It should have made a perfect connection down here, which it has, and the beginning and end as at the top here. As you can see, if I just click once and move, you can see they're, well, they're not connected yet, but the curve closes. I still have my original curves in the background, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click once, and that select one side of it. If I do that, hold on shift and do a marquee select, it'll invert my selection, delete that guy. This guy we want to close now, so that it's a singular curve that goes all the way around. So we're going to go to curves and then we're going to go close, open, close. Now you'll see it's no longer two points just chilling there. It is 
properly closed. So now with that shape drawn, before I do anything else, I'm gonna go into my perspective. I'm gonna duplicate this guy. Because why try and redraw something when we can just duplicate it? Because from the side view, you can see we've got a flat face and then uh, basically you can say it's extruding down or we can use a loft to connect up these guys, which is pretty good. So I want to keep the secondary curve for when I start bringing out the thickness of this controller. Front one, I am gonna go and say surface and I'm gonna go planar. As you can see, it dropped in a plane. I've got transparency on. Dropped in a plane, but it's backwards, so surfaces, reverse direction. Now we got the front side of this controller. I'm gonna go back into my side view, which is this guy. As you can see, I can't see through my surface. I'm just gonna do this little button, which is x-ray mode, so that I can see through the geometry as well as see my image plane. So now I need to go and draw all of these curves up. So what, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the power of editing and do a time lapse of me just drawing out curves. Okay, so I shall catch you on the other side.
and welcome back. So as you can see, I have drawn out all the shapes that I saw on the front side of this controller. I fixed up a little bit. As I've mentioned before, you will never find reference images that are perfect. So again, I've relied on my grid center line to get things to line up and be symmetrical on either side. The only thing that's not symmetrical on this controller is this top little light, but everything else is symmetrical and snaps to the center of the grid. Only one more that I think that wants to fight me is this guy, but it's pretty close to grid center. Well, it is close. It is on grid center. It just looks a bit all weighted or tilted to the one side due to this one little arm. But let's turn off our image plane and have a look at it. It all looks a bit weirdly off, even though I literally just rotated it. But either the one side is too close and the other side. I'm gonna pull this one out a bit because I pulled in that one a bit earlier. Object mode. Wait, I can just have them snap to that outer grid line and then everything should be fine. I'm gonna hold on G for grid snapping. Nap that to there. You grid snap to here and then we should be a four okay that looks a lot better i think now i'm going to end this lesson off here and i'm going to continue creating this controller in part two so catch you in the next lesson